So, uh, we will continue our discussion on uh, reactive distillation. Uh, yesterday, we looked at several commercially important systems in which uh, reactive distillation can be used. Uh, it is an upcoming field, I told you yesterday, the various advantages of using reactive distillation uh, such as enhancement in conversion, enhancement in selectivity, uh, uh, increase in catalyst life, then uh, temperature control and so many. Okay. Uh, and uh, we looked at various examples like uh, esterification reaction for uh, manufacture of methyl acetate, then etherification for manufacture of MTBE, then uh, acetylization reaction, then um, isobutene to diisobutene for selectivity engineering. And uh, so many uh, uh, commercially important systems where actually reactive distillation is applied, is practiced and some places where uh, reactive distillation finds a potentially important uh, applications, right. Uh, so, today uh, we are going to learn uh, how to develop a process, okay, um, or uh, uh, how to uh, get into the process development studies uh, related to uh, reactive distillation. Uh, for example, somebody comes to me and uh, tells me, okay, that you have, uh, I have a re reaction, okay, and uh, I want to know whether I can use reactive distillation in the process. Uh, the answer is not so simple, okay, and because I told you yesterday we cannot apply reactive distillation to all the systems because there are many constraints, okay, like um, uh, the most important uh, one is uh, the volatility should be right, okay, the temperature of reaction should match the temperature of distillation, right. And uh, after doing all this, even if reactive distillation is feasible, whether it is economically viable or not is again a big question, right. Uh, so, feasibility is one issue at the same time uh, whether uh, it is economically beneficial or not is another issue, right. So, these two things are uh, uh, one, one has to really see to get the reaction to distillation commercialized for a given process, okay. Uh, this particular lecture tells you uh, about different activities, different steps you have to go through uh, uh, while uh, developing a reactive distillation process and we have considered um, uh, a very uh, common reaction uh, again the esterification reaction as, as, as an example okay. and uh, we have uh, done uh, some work on this reaction in our laboratory and uh, we have gone through all the steps okay, uh, for reactive distillation process development studies and uh, I will uh, tell you about that in this particular lecture. Okay. Uh, reaction is acetic acid okay, uh, with n-butanol giving uh, butyl acetate and water, okay. Esterification reaction, reversible reaction as you know Lee Chatterley's principle, if you remove one of the products or both the products during the course of the reaction, reaction shifts in forward direction and you get enhanced conversion. And if you look at a process, I can use stoichiometric ratio of acetic acid and butanol. So, I do not have any unconverted reactants, okay, uh, if the reaction is 100 percent. So, recycle is uh, avoided, okay right and there will be reduction in capital cost as well because I am doing both reaction and separation in a single piece of equipment, right. So, reactive distillation would be beneficial for such reactions, it is a potentially important system. Now, if I want to design a reactive distillation column, okay, if I want to see um, uh, how reactive distillation will give you better results, then I have to do so many things, okay. So, that is what we are going to see in this particular lecture. Now, look at this system, the proposed reactive distillation flow sheet, it comes out of your experience, okay. Initially, you are going to start with some configuration in your mind, okay. What I will say is like, okay, acetic acid and butanol, two reactants, okay. They go to a pre-reactor, right, pre-reactor. You do as much conversion as possible in the pre-reactor. I told you the reason. What is the reason? Why, why, why do you have pre-reactor and then the reactive distillation column? Why can't we do both or rather the entire reaction in just one uh, distillation column. Sizing. sizing at the same time, see the yeah the load. I want to reduce the load on reactive distillation column because most of the times in the column I use uh, reactive packings uh, and it would be most of the times uh, um, expensive. Okay, so I want to reduce the load on this particular piece of equipment. So as much reaction as possible. You do it in a simple reactor. It can be a slurry reactor. It can be a fixed bed reactor. Okay, and that then take the equilibrium mixture to the reactive distillation column. Okay, so that is the theme I have in my mind before I start my process development studies. Okay, and what is expected based on the knowledge that I have about the system, the vapor liquid equilibrium of the system is that butyl acetate being 
less volatile or least volatile component in the system will come out from the bottom okay which is a product of course boiling point at atmospheric pressure is 127 okay and from the top you have the azeotrope okay azeotrope heterogeneous see the decanter there heterogeneous this azeotrope is a ternary azeotrope a minimum boiling ternary azeotrope of butanol okay butyl acetate and water okay so once you have this vapors getting condensed i can take the water out which is another product right now the beauty of this lle or liquid liquid equilibrium is that the vapors when they condense okay the aqueous layer is almost pure water okay aqueous layer is almost pure water okay so with that much knowledge i just say okay i have a possible configuration like this which can work and give me almost 100% conversion so i don't need anything in the plant right no further separation purification and all that right i have pure products coming out okay so this is my entire process right now i want to design this it's not so simple because you have both reaction and distillation taking place in a single piece of equipment on the distillation trays or can be packing okay right so you have both things happening here now what are the complexities so let's go ahead okay so in order to uh, do the process develop development studies okay we have to follow various steps and i have uh, given a flow chart here the organization of all the work elements okay as far as process development study of reactor distillation is concerned what do we need to do first experiments for reaction kinetics and regression see now so far we have been talking about distillation and distillation what is important is vapor liquid equilibrium okay right but here along with vapor liquid equilibrium the reaction kinetics will play a very important role okay so whatever knowledge we have about distillation i can just extend it to reactive distillation it all depends on how the reaction okay is playing its role whether it's very fast reaction or it's very slow reaction so the kinetics is important right and once you do the kinetics regression that means i need to get the kinetic parameters it's like vapor liquid equilibrium i do ex vapor liquid equilibrium experiments i and estimate the parameters like binary interaction parameters for liquid phase activity coefficient and all similarly in the kinetics if you remember the kinetic equation r is equal to kc acb minus k dash cc cd so i need to get this k and k dash right so i do experiment in laboratory find the data the data is typically in the forms conversion versus time or conversion versus residence time if you are using a plug flow reactor in laboratory right if you are using a batch reactor it would be conversion versus time so this data is used to get the kinetic equation right so this is one important activity another important activity you know very well so you learn so much about distillation so in this case we are generating vapor liquid equilibrium data and of course the many many possibilities typically for liquid phase uh, non ideality mm, the apparatus that we showed you the modified atmos still is used if you are re really looking at simple systems atmospheric pressure or vacuum rather okay right so vapor liquid equilibrium data generation and again regression or parameter estimation where you determine non ideality or other the uh, binary interaction parameters for model okay now I'm, if i'm talking about inequac model then corresponding parameters would be required if it is wilson then so that's right so uh, this is a quaternary system so we have to generate vapor liquid equilibrium data for all the binaries okay we have to uh, generate the vapor liquid equilibrium data for all the binaries and then uh, so it's not just butyl acetate and water right because in my reactive distillation column all the components would be there right so you get the binary interaction parameters here and then try and predict the behavior of the quaternary system that's the way we do it for normal distillation so these are the two important pillars i would say okay on which the entire reactive distillation process development study is based on okay what do we do, do next okay next is the conceptual design so we have been talking about conceptual design for last 3 4 days for enhanced or complex distillation systems okay whether distillation is feasible or not 
the same answer you will get here whether react to distillation is feasible or not okay by taking data from kinetics by taking information from vapor liquid equilibrium uh, experiments at this particular stage i uh, do some analysis before going for further rigorous experiments and simulation okay just to know whether react to distillation is worth going ahead or not sometimes you get an answer no right so just stop your exercise there okay <laughs> right but most of the times if you have some gut feelings experience okay and uh, based on the boiling points or volatilities if, if you decide to go for reactive distillation the answer is always yes but then it gives you some important information like what should be the reflux ratio okay what should be the residence time now i'm talking about residence time okay this is an important consideration in reactive distillation nowhere nowhere in your all other uh, lectures on distillation we talked about residence time okay right we didn't talk about hold up and other things to that extent but here it's very important in the reactive distillation column the residence time plays a very important role suppose you have a solid catalyst the catalyst loading okay it's an is a very important parameter okay so that is going to play an important role that's why you get some idea at this particular stage what should be the order of magnitude for the reflux ratio number of stages or the damkolar number what is damkolar number it is it decides the extent of reaction so it is proportional to residence time okay right uh, so we get some in inputs from this particular uh, exercise and then then you can do the steady state simulations okay it can be dynamic or steady state simulation depending on what you are interested in and you can simultaneously perform column experiments okay so uh, you looked at the setups in the laboratory right typically 3 to 4 meter height column 2 inch diameter okay you get catalytic packing from companies like sulzer coke engineering and all okay uh, you use those packing for reaction of your your interest right perform experiments in laboratory do rigorous simulation at the same time taking some inputs from the conceptual design um, exercise and then see whether your simulation predictions are matching with ex experimental data that you have generated okay this is a very important step because now the model takes inputs from both kinetics and vapor liquid equilibrium okay and if, if you go wrong in one of these okay then your predictions would go wrong right so this this step is very important and if there is no match then you have to go back and see where you are going wrong okay right because once you have a model which is experimentally validated okay then you can go ahead and do optimization control scale up and so many other things and you can think of doing commercialization right but this step is very important simulation and column experiments in fact that's what we have been talking about throughout this program okay like you have on one side you have conceptual design then you have uh, simulations and you have laboratory experiments all these three things rather should go hand in hand or other uh, should be given equal importance while designing a complex distillation system right? okay if it is very simple ideal systems so much is known about it <coughs> sorry is not much of a problem okay but for system like this okay especially when i am talking about reactive distillation okay not much experience okay it's, it's a novel process right gut feelings won't help because there are so many things happening reaction distillation mixing right and once you have this model ready then you are ready ready to play with the model and get the optimal uh, solution or optimal configuration can design a control system okay and that and you can even go back and uh, uh, fine tune your parameters if required okay so at this stage you are ready for commercialization ready for scale up okay and these are the activities one can perform in laboratory you can see one block here hardware selection okay uh, this is again very important in the case of reactive distillation so in the last lecture you lo uh, looked at column internals okay for distillation systems okay but uh, in this case uh it is not just distillation but you have to look um, at the column internals they are good for both distillation and reaction right so you have additional constraint on the column internals uh, i think i have some slides on this and uh, we'll talk about it when uh, we proceed okay so first activity is to get kinetic model for the reaction okay and uh, of course this is for butyl acetate system this is for butyl acetate system this is a kinetic rate equation all i want to tell here is that you have a very complex model here 
So as I said, kinetics means what? Normally, if you go through any textbook of kinetics like Levenspiel or Fogler, most of the times the problem solved use the kinetics R is equal to K C A C B and all that. But in this case, the kinetics you can see there is no K C A C B type uh, factors here. I, of course, I can see K that is forward rate constant. But look at what you have inside this bracket. All these A's are activities and not concentrations. So normally the rate equation is expressed in terms of activities because all these components are reactive and most of the time the system is non-ideal. Okay. Since the system is non-ideal, okay, instead of concentration is always better to work in terms of activity. Okay. Uh, and then you get an equation which is valid over the entire composition space. Okay, right. So, you, so this is the equation that I have given for um, butyl acetate and these are the parameters that we have estimated. Okay. And of course, there are many possible equations possi uh, uh, which can be used and looking at the residual okay, um, for your regression analysis, you select one of them. Okay. So, there are many possible equations depending on uh, uh, the residual or rather the um, uh, success of the parameter estimation will be decided uh, based on the residual. But uh, these are the models for um, solid catalysts. Okay. Now, one thing I did not tell you that this reaction of butyl acetate synthesis okay, is performed in the presence of ion exchange resin catalyst which is a solid catalyst. Okay. Sometimes you may have homogeneous catalyst less PTSA, sulfuric acid and all that. In that case, this model mo may not be so complicated. Okay. When, when you are using solid catalyst, the reaction takes place on the surface of the catalyst okay. and in that case, you have to use adsorption based equations like uh, LA radial or LHSW radial, Langmuir, Hinshelwood, uh, Hugen Watson model. Right. So, one important point here again uh, uh, probably we talked about it in distillation um, as well that uh, we should look at a composition space. What does it mean? It means that when you do kinetic studies in laboratory, Okay. When you do kinetic studies in laboratory, you do it in a batch reactor. Okay. So, I'll, what will I do? I will take acetic acid, I will take butanol, I will do the reaction, I will follow the course with respect to time. I right. will get a data and generate a kinetics based on that. Now, most of the times this kinetic, kinetics is available for that particular composition space. Now, in this case, you have a batch kinetic runs with pure reactants. This is a normal thing that we do in laboratory. Okay. So, you are in this particular zone of the composition space. Look at this composition space. This is a 3D space. I have four components, right? I have four components. This is pure acetic acid, N butanol, water, and N butyl acetate, right? When you do batch experiments on kinetics, you are in this zone, right? You are in this zone, okay? But then, if you do reactive distillation, it is quite likely that you will cross this zone you will cross this zone and you may go here, may go here that is what we have shown here. Of course, this, these profiles we have plotted based on the experiments that, that we did later okay, in reactive distillation column. So, all I want to say here is that your composition profile in reactive distillation can travel from one corner to another corner okay, right? depending on how the vapor liquid equilibrium uh, interacts with react, uh, reaction. Right? So, it, so, you need to generate a data over the entire composition space to get the kinetic parameters because if you are somewhere here right? and if your kinetic data is generated based on or your kinetic parameters are estimated based on the data generated here, okay, they may not be valid, right? they may not be uh, exactly correct. Okay. So, it is always better to generate a data in this zone. So, you may start with some butyl acid present in the batch reactor, I am talking about generating kinetic data in laboratory. Okay. So, instead of starting with pure reactants, you may start with some in N-butyl acid present okay, and generate batch reactor data. Okay, right. Another important thing is in laboratory, you work with small amount of catalyst and most of the time, if you see the kinetic equation, you have this M cat here. What does it mean? the rate is directly proportional to amount of catalyst. right? But what happens sometimes if you are working with dilute systems, the rate will increase, Okay, it is increasing linearly with catalyst loading, this is catalyst loading and this is initial rate. Okay, But after certain loading, okay, you see it goes away from the linear graph. 
and in the reactor distillation the catalyst loading is very high because you are packing okay, column with catalytic bagging right the catalyst amount per unit volume is much higher in reactive distillation right so you are in this particular zone right and that is where you have the kinetics given by this plot okay and if you have the data generated here and if you use a direct relationship which is given by this linear plot you will have the error this much error right which is significant you should be careful about all these aspects when you do scale up right and this is typical or is, uh, this is uh, uh, typicality of reactive distillation okay such types of uh, such type of behavior okay normally observed in reactive distillation where you there are many other possibilities like vapor liquid equilibrium interacting with reactive uh, kinetics and so on right now vapor li uh, we vapor liquid equilibrium okay the one part is over that is kinetics we are talking about vapor liquid equilibrium okay and of course we have talked so much about it uh, in last four five days on vapor liquid equilibrium and uh, this is our apparatus uh, we have shown this apparatus to you already okay we have this equilibrium chamber and we generate the data for different binaries okay for different binaries and these are the existing correlations available for the same uh, system that is uh, the cotton system of butanol butyl acetate acetic acid and water and this is the one that we have come up with okay and uh, see look at this particular system we have so many azeotropes okay so many azeotropes there there are almost five azeotropes in this system one with water water butyl acetate water butanol butanol butyl acetate acetic acid butanol and there is a ternary azeotrope okay right and this is the model that we have used okay in our uh, simulations later okay or conceptual design rather and of course vapor phase there is um, dimerization of acetic acid acetic acid is a tendency to dimerize in the vapor phase that needs to be considered okay and there are separate models for that I am trying to tell you the importance of vapor liquid equilibrium and case like this where I am dealing with the reacting system okay I am dealing with the reacting system there is uh, so much complexity the system is highly non ideal and we should be very careful about it just do not go by vol volatilities do not go by boiling points okay. So, we have generated vapor liquid equilibrium data we have generated kinetics now next step is to do the conceptual design okay. So, in uh, last three four days we looked at conceptual design of distillation systems now I am this is this slide is for conceptual design of reactive distillation systems of course I am not going to tell details about it okay I am just going to tell you that there are some tools available okay which can determine the feasibility in reactive distillation okay like residue curve map okay residue curve map it, it is used to determine the feasibility for azeotropic systems okay something like that we have here okay which is co current cascades with chemical reaction okay this is a model okay like uh, residue curve map this particular model has um, uh, corresponding equations okay we solve them okay and get some uh, results okay which can be used to uh, identify or uh, 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 work out the feasibility of reactive distillation okay I am not going to talk much about this uh, the, uh, as I said like uh, this is again an important tool or important step of conceptual design that tells you whether uh, I will get pure butyl acid at the bottom whether I will get pure water at the top or not okay because initially I just started with an assumption the first configuration that I showed you I said that okay I have acetic acid butanol going to the column right and from bottom I will get butyl acetate from top I will get water okay that was my gut feeling okay whether that happens or not okay it will happen in reality or not how can I prove it and it is always good to do it on paper first right before I actually build a column or do some rigorous simulation. So, this particular exercise tells you okay. So, this is a plot of uh, temperature versus diamcolor number in dimensionless form. Diamcolor number is the extent of reaction. So, if I increase the catalyst loading, the diamcolor number increases. If I increase the residence time, the diamcolor number increases okay. So, it tells you that I can get the possible bottom compositions okay. If I solve those equations okay, uh, I get possible bottom compositions. So, this is one possible composition that is n-butanol acetic acid azeotrope or I can get n butanol as a possible bottom composition or I can get n butyl acetate as a possible product bottom composition. What do I want? I want n butyl acetate as the bottom product and this particular exercise tells me that this is possible okay. 
this is possible. So, this is possible or potential bottom composition, right. And top composition is given by this particular line, but this is again azeotrope. And the, once the azeotrope is broken, or rather, the this is the heterogeneous azeotrope, okay, you have the aqueous phase which is almost pure water. So, this particular exercise tells me that it is possible to remove butyl acetate as a bottom product, okay, in pure form. And I develop confidence, of course, how to do this, I am not going to spend much time on this, okay. There are there are tools available that much I can say, okay. Right. So, I got the answer that I can go ahead, it is feasible, I can perform reactive distillation. Next step is to do experiments in laboratory and simulation, okay. Right. Experiments in laboratory and simultaneously simulation and validate my simulation model so that this simulation model can be used further to do optimization or uh, even design control system, okay. So, we have this laboratory scale reactive distillation column, you all, you all have seen that, okay. Uh, it is a multi-purpose column, hybrid column, you can see the middle portion, the red one where we have packed the column with catalyst or catalytic packing, okay, typically catapack S, okay, which is Sulzer packing, quite popular, okay, I have show, I have given it here, right. It is a 3 meter tall column, temperature sensors are situated at various locations, you have facility to withdraw samples, right. Okay, so, I can find out a column composition profile, I can find out a column temperature profile, okay. This is the picture of this particular uh, setup, right. And uh, for butyl acetate system, okay, conversion is of the order of 98 percent, laboratory scale column, then concentration of butyl acetate in the bottom stream is greater than 97 percent, okay. So, uh, it shows that okay, it is possible to get almost close to 100 percent conversion, okay. So, these are the experimental results, okay, right. And, uh, but uh, it is not very easy to conduct these experiments. Let me tell you that uh, uh, once we start these experiments, uh, it takes at least uh, 10 to 12 hours to get a steady state, okay. The students they normally work in shifts, okay, even in academic institute, right. And uh, 10 to 12 is the minimum time required. Okay, to get a steady state, uh, if everything goes well, okay, no no power uh, shutdown and all that. Okay, so uh, once you get a steady state, you have to remove samples because there's no control on this column. Okay, I, we purposely we don't have any control. Control step will come later. So we just want to get a steady state results. Right? Typically, what we do is we charge the reboiler with uh, the reaction mixture, butyl acetate. <laughs> Uh, water acetic acid and butanol, we um, uh, keep a column initially under total reflux as I, I think we demonstrated that to you before for azeotropic distillation as well. Uh, and then we uh, once uh, the temperature profile is established in the column, okay, the column is uh, relatively hot, then we start feed, okay, start feed of butanol, um, sorry, uh, the equilibrium mixture, okay, the equilibrium mixture of butanol, butyl acetate, water and acetic acid. Okay. And then we wait till the temperature becomes constant everywhere, the com composition becomes constant everywhere, both top feed, bottom feed, overall material balance is satisfied, F is equal to D plus B, right. And uh, component balance is also satisfied, that means, then that means uh, if the reactant is getting consumed, that much product should form. So, everything is established, okay, then we report the results. Okay. So, these are the steady state results. So, what do I, what, what do I generate? I generate a data of temperature profile in the column, composition profile in the column, right, how much is the conversion, what is the top flow rate, bottom flow rate, right. And of course, the reboiler duty and everything is known. Now, this all this is connected to the computer. So, it is always easy to rather uh, identify the steady state. Once the temperatures they become constant, I know I am very close to the steady state. So, I start removing the sample, okay, samples rather and I check them with respect to time. Okay. That is the way we conduct the experiment on reactive distillation. So, we have a data available now for the given system and then of course, I have very certain parameters say reboiler duty, right, feed flow rate, the mole ratio in the feed, okay. uh, sometimes the column height that is a bit difficult, we have to play with the column uh, setup, but that also we do sometimes. Okay. So, we have generated data, the next step would be to do simulations. Okay. And of course, we have spent so much time on simulation. Simulation of reactive distillation for that matter is not different from simulation of distillation, okay. There is only one difference that you incorporate reaction. 
So, when you write the species balance on a given system or rather for on a given tray, okay, then in the species balance whatever coming is going out okay, plus reacted. Okay. So, react, reaction term will appear in uh, those equations right? and of course, like depending on whether reaction is equimolar or non-equimolar your flow rates would change and all that. But then you can write a model and simulation software or a simulator you should be able to take care of that. So, whatever simulator simulation models were developed for normal distillation when I say normal means not reactive or non reactive distillation the same model can be easily extended to reactive distillation okay, without much of a difficulty. So, the solution method is same you still use that naphthali sandal okay, algorithm inside out right. Okay. Newton Rassum based um, approach, but there are different uh, possibilities you can consider the stage as an equilibrium stage that means the streams leaving a particular stage they are in equilibrium phase equilibrium or sometimes as I said before uh, you do not provide proper contact okay, then this, uh, the streams will not be in equilibrium so you have to consider efficiency. Now, when I am talking about equilibrium I am not talking about reaction equilibrium okay, when I am saying equilibrium that means it is only the phase equilibrium. Okay. Reaction equilibrium will be achieved if the reaction is very very fast, okay. but most of the times the reactions are relatively slow okay. and that is why you can easily or you can uh, assume comfortably the streams to be in phase equilibrium, but not in reaction equilibrium. Okay. But of course, if you have very large catalyst amount of loading the reaction is intrinsically very fast. Okay. In that case sometimes you, you can go to reaction equilibrium as well, okay. but there are models available, okay. there are models available and the solvers now, okay. you can actually solve write programs of course, in our lab we have written our own programs because commercial software like Aspen and all they have their own limitations in terms of kinetics that we can give and all. So, we have written programs in our lab, but in the worst case like of course, uh, you can use Aspen of course, the solvers are quite robust okay. uh, getting convergence is uh, ensured here, right. but then uh, of course, you have to have user defined kinetics if the kinetics is uh, um, uh, complex, right. you can use Aspen there are some other software which are uh, uh, in which we can uh, do programming and all okay. like in write equations on, on, on our own. Okay. Of course, Aspen is very user friendly you have to just give input and it will come out with the output. Um, composition of the outgoing streams and then the composition profile. Right. So, you are doing simulation here. Right. So, here we are doing actual experiment here you are doing virtual experiment right. and then you have the results you have to match them. Okay. In the match that means my model is good, okay. my simulator or simulation model that I have used is experimentally validated. Okay. So, that is what we see here. So, your comparison of steady state experimental and simulation profiles. Okay. I am giving example of butyl acetate system again here. Okay. So, I am going through the butyl acetate system as and when we uh, change the system if I, I want to tell you more about uh, other aspects of reactive distillation through other reactions I will mention that. Okay. So, these are different column composition profiles okay, where you have acetic acid, butanol, butyl acetate, water and temperature. So, this is the experimental data that we have generated in laboratory actual points and the continuous lines are the model predictions okay not bad no good so that means uh, we have confidence in our simulation model right now once i have a model as i said before now i can play with the model okay i can i have i have so many things i can do like i can do look at the dynamics that means how the things change with respect to time there is some fluctuation in the field okay how will it get reflected in my results okay how will column respond to changes okay so this is what we have done okay I have, uh, rather we have shown everything um, here not just dynamics but the effect of different parameters also if i change one parameter effect of dam cooler number that is uh, catalyst loading effect of number of reactive stages okay effect of feed location effect of mole ratio in the feed right the effect of mole ratio of butanol to acetic acid in the feed. I will come to this plot later because it is very important. Okay. The effect of flow rate right, and effect of revolver duty and see how it uh, changes your uh, performance 
and that gives me some insight into column behavior and uh, it tells me like what should be the parameter range I should operate the column at so that I will get the best possible performance because whatever I ob observed here may not be the best performance okay. This is just for experimental validation right and what I am going to do next is a parametric study where I determine the optimal parameters or the performance which uh, the best possible performance and the parameters required for that right. I will come to this plot what I have shown here is very um, uh, as an important aspect of reactive distillation that we have realized through our research. Um, you have mole ratio of butanol to acetic acid in the feed versus DBE formation what is DBE okay and that is in PPM okay is in PPM. DB is dibutyl ether okay. Now I did not mention about this particular compound before okay. This is yeah this is dibutyl ether which is a side product okay and this ether is very high boiling and it comes along with butyl acetate in the bottom right and it spoils the specs okay. Nobody will buy butyl acetate with DB present above certain limitation or permissible limit right. So, this is an important aspect. Now, if I do the reaction of butanol and acetic acid in a normal reactor say CSTR or plug flow reactor fixed bed reactor I would not see DB formation okay. I would not see dibutyl ether formation. In this case reactive distillation gives me dibutyl ether formation right okay. That means not good though it is helping me to enhance the conversion, it is helping me to reduce the capital cost. It is not good because it is giving me unwanted product. Let us try and understand why we get it okay and these are the points okay which uh, we have determined experimentally and we tried to correlate it with model predictions okay. So, we had a separate kinetics for DB formation which we included in the simulation model and we compared the data okay. So, why, why this dibutyl ether formation is taking place? It is a very important aspect not just for this reaction or this application. It is true for other applications also and we should be very, very uh, careful while uh, looking at reactive distillation as a possible candidate for this process. I am not saying that it is always good. There are many disadvantages also if you do not take proper care in process development and design. Okay. Why it is forming? Because in the reactive distillation column okay, in the reactive zone if you look at the concentrations this is where your reactive zone would be and you have large amount of butanol present there and not much acetic acid see in this case you have butanol present there and you do not have much acetic acid very small amount. In a normal reactor what will happen since you have stoichiometric ratio of acetic acid and butanol okay if one mole of acetic acid gets consumed one mole of butanol gets consumed right. So, both will go together. So, butanol will always find acetic acid to react with but in this case because at some places you have more butanol and less acetic acid okay butanol sometimes does not find acetic acid to react with and make butyl acetate it reacts with itself okay because there is large amount of catalyst there temperature is high okay right. So, you get dibutyl ether of course, the quantity is less that ppm quantity, but still it is significant as far as the product specifications are concerned right okay. So, this is very important aspect and why do you get this and not in a normal reactor because in this case the profiles are not determined only by reaction, but by distillation as well, but by vapor liquid equilibrium as well okay. So, that is a very important point that your profile in the column will get adjusted according to both reaction and distillation which is much different from the profile in a normal plug flow reactor which is determined only by the reaction stoichiometry right. And because of that because of that there is a possibility of formation of side products okay and which is happening in this particular case and which goes against reactive distillation right. But then of course, we looked at butanol to acid ratio that is why uh, we say that okay you use more butanol oh sorry you use less butanol you use more acid in the feed 
slightly excess okay in that case your ratio would be less okay, and you will get less amount of dbe okay so you should be very careful side products but now since i'm see this is as i said this goes against reactive distillation the side product formation because the composition profiles they take a very peculiar pattern and because of that you have formation of side products but i can use this advantageously for other reactions to increase the selectivity towards the desired product okay in this case what has happened is the side reaction side reaction got enhanced so i can play with the profiles in such a way that the main reaction gets enhanced okay so whenever you have selectivity problems as i was telling you yesterday a going to b going to c and i want to increase the selectivity towards b okay in that case i can play with composition profile that increase the selectivity right i'll come to that later before that of course uh, there's so much discussion on column internals but about reactive distillation again we have to be very careful and uh, uh, we have se several types of column internals or column packings available okay now the very important point here is now i want to use catalyst in the column right this typical catalyst particle size is suppose it's ion exchange resin what's the particle size less than 1 mm okay can i just put ion exchange resin in the distillation column i can't do that what will happen tremendous pressure drop flooding and so many things okay the column performance will collapse right so how do i use this packings in the or sorry how do how do i use this catalyst in the column the various ways like your tea bags okay you put the catalyst in some envelopes and you have a collection of these envelopes okay so you have so vapor finds space through this envelopes and there is good voidage so there is no pressure drop right and i showed you the packing catapack s okay where you had this uh, envelopes in the packing itself right and there are many many other ways where you can coat the catalytic material on the existing distillation packing but of course there are limitations we can't go to very high uh, catalytic catalyst loading we don't get surface area that much surface area which is required for reaction there are many pictures shown here okay now i have dynamics i have a simulation model okay i can use the same simulation model write it in uh, time variant form so i have i look at a uh, dynamics okay how the things will change with respect to time suppose i have fluctuation in the feed this is again for butyl acetate huh? suppose i have fluctuation in the feed how the column will respond to that okay so for example i am not going to talk about all the figures look at this particular figure okay where i am changing my volumetric flow rate at this particular time okay this is a, there is a pulse here okay there is a pulse here how the column will respond to that okay the mole fraction of butyl acetate in the bottom okay you can see this this is not exactly uh, actually these two are at the same time okay these two are at the same time so the column will respond to it but when it comes back okay the column also goes back to its original stage original original steady state similarly here in the negative direction i give the pulse again the column goes these are all stage compositions okay right okay so this is the column response now in this case there is not much harm okay if i there is some fluctuation right column will respond to it but will the fluctuation goes away column will come back to its original steady state okay but then in some cases now it's very important in some cases it doesn't happen that i suppose you have fluctuation in your feed composition or feed flow rate okay right column is running smooth but some fluctuation occurs in the feed composition or flow rate or pressure or any any state variable for that matter it is possible that column will change its or our column will respond to it but if the fluctuation goes away column doesn't come back to its original steady state column will achieve some other steady state right that means you you are getting conversion of 98% okay and there is some small fluctuation in your feed composition i'm just giving an example okay right small fluctuation in your feed composition you're getting 98% conversion smooth running well small fluctuation you don't notice also 
say for few seconds a few minutes okay right and then you realize all of a sudden the composition has changed in the column the temperature profile has changed in the column right and the bottom composition is changed and your conversion comes down from a 98 percent to 20 percent just because of small fluctuation. Such possibilities exist in reactive distillation. Why? Because a very complex process, highly non-linear process is something called as multiple steady states. Okay. You must have heard about multiple steady states. A CSTR, a very common example in reaction engineering. Okay. CSTR, exothermic reaction, multiple steady states. Okay. So, here also it is possible that you get multiple steady states. That means for the same input, okay, you can you can have two different outputs and one corresponds to very high conversion and the other would be at low conversion and and just small fluctuation will take you from high conversion to low conversion. You should be aware of all this okay, before we design because sometimes if you just go by steady state design say I have, I have perfectly designed column you commission it works well, but then I have not identified its sensitivity towards the inputs. Right, and I may not know that it is likely to give me multiple steady states. Okay. Right, and while during operation, if something goes wrong, for few seconds, few minutes, okay, and the column starts behaving erratically. Okay, and such possibilities exist in reactive distillation. Be very careful. The operation and control is also very important. So nonlinear dynamics. This multiplicity would come because of all this, okay, non-linearity basically. Non, if you see the equations, the non-linear equations, and non-linearity exists in enthalpy balance, vapor liquid equilibrium. Maybe there in reaction kinetics as well. See non-linearity. Look at the equation; it's non-linear. It's not like y is equal to m x plus c, okay. So because of that, you may see steady state multiplicity, or you may see oscillations. The column will oscillate, sustained oscillations, okay. If you just analyze the top composition or temperature, okay, with respect to time, you can see oscillations. So I'm going to show you that. Look at this. This is another example. This is not butyl acetate. Okay, this is TAME. I was telling you about it yesterday. Tertiary amyl methyl ether column. The Reliance Jamnagar refinery has this plant. Okay, TAME plant. Commercial process. Of course, I don't know much about how it they operate it and all that, but then. I am telling you it is commercially important product. Okay. So, you can see the fluctuation would result, see there are some fluctuations, the feed concentration is changed and column which were otherwise running smoothly okay, in this particular case, for this particular design you start seeing the oscillations. Right. Such possibilities exist in reactive distillation. Of course, you can see the details here. There is a reference. I, if you want more details, I, I will provide you. Okay. The aim of this particular slide is to show you that there, there is a possibility of seeing even oscillations and not just multiple steady states. Okay. There is further analysis here. I will just skip this slide. So, I will just summarize okay, uh, the process development studies of reactive distillation would involve generation of kinetic data. Okay should be very careful, should have a versatile kinetic model. When I say versatile means it should be valid over the entire composition space in every corner of the composition space. The reason is the composition profile in the reactive distillation column may travel from any corner of the composition space to any corner okay, depending on the vapor liquid equilibrium. So, you should be very careful right, while generating the kinetic data. Thermodynamics of course, I did not mention about it. Otherwise, it is well known how to generate kinetic data, it is all established. We had so many lectures on thermodynamics, but for reactive system, okay, it is very challenging. Suppose the system is reacting, you can imagine the modified Osmer steel, right? Okay, how do I generate a data for two components A and B which are reacting? I cannot generate vapor, just vapor liquid equilibrium data. The moment they come in contact with each other, they will react also. No? So, getting that steady state and equilibrium is, is a problem, right. In our case, of course, acetic acid and butanol we could generate because they do not react without catalyst, okay. So, in Othman still, I do not I don't have catalyst, right. I can generate a binary interaction parameter. But sometimes we have studied some other reactions also where the catalyst 
is not required the reactant itself is a catalyst self catalyzed reaction okay in that case in that case it is very tricky right generating the vapor liquid equilibrium data right the homogeneous system in the orthmer series itself you have the reaction taking place right column hardware I told you the main problem here catalytic packing now ion exchange resin packing we can put them okay in envelopes like tea bags and all whereas suppose you have zeolite catalyst you can imagine zeolite small particles crystalline okay typical size is micron okay if you increase the particle size then you have intra particle diffusion uh, resistance and all coming in picture right small crystals I cannot put them in tea bags right I cannot put them in those wire mesh envelopes they will come out of it no micron size I cannot have uh, mesh that can uh, hold uh, micron size particles crystals right how do I do then what what is the solution. So, they are trying to rather deposit this zeolite particles on metallic surfaces now imagine like we talked about structured packing in the last lecture structured packing if I deposit zeolite particles on the structured packings okay. I can effectively use that, but again uh, like uh, the efficiency of this deposition okay like because of some because this is always some flow taking place the vapor going up and liquid coming down. So, you have some problems of uh, right uh, catalyst okay going uh, leaving the uh, support right. Conceptual design now I talked about equilibrium reactions but then you have multiple reactions there is no tool available okay there is no tool available I am talking about selectivity suppose I have two reactions taking place simultaneously I am interested in uh, one of the products okay in that case conceptual design methods are not well developed okay there is tremendous scope in this direction okay uh, for research of course right and the last uh, aspect of process development that is nonlinear dynamics and control st is still wide open okay as I told you now people have just identified that okay such possibilities exist okay like multiple steady states oscillations and all that okay but then what is the cause behind it right if such thing happens what should be the control strategy how do, how do I design the control system right. No, no such work is reported in literature of course whatever is available it is at its primitive stage okay. So, much work required to be done okay to understand this particular aspect of reactive distillation okay. So, as I said before like other distillation systems like azeotropic distillation extractive distillation or uh, uh, your normal distillation with uh, 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 non-ideal systems including tangent pinches and all that. So, it is all well known well established and we have a book okay uh, talking about uh, the theoretical aspects uh, how do the thermodynamic interact thermodynamics interacts with uh, uh, mass transfer. But here there are so many issues okay still need attention and there is so much research going on and uh, there is so much work and that is the main reason of course, of course you need to take efforts on laboratory scale experiments okay. So, distillation as such they see this they say that the scalar pressures are very high okay. There is so much information available okay. I just need to know the vapor liquid equilibrium okay. Hardware is not the of course, we had a special lecture for that, but then um, uh, it is not a very crucial uh, uh, aspect of course, it is crucial, but then as compared to reactive distillation uh, the design of hardware uh, it is it's, it's well known as for that matter okay. And, uh, that, that way uh, scale up of uh, distillation is not so difficult compared to reactive distillation and so much work required to be done as far as process development is concerned on laboratory level.